and welcome to your home, which is uh, um, uh, Ebro River Basin Administration. What we're going to do in this moment is to introduce you or to present some projects uh, that are uh, very much new and that as of today they're being applied already, implemented already, and uh, they're a reality and they're already working. And uh, with no further introduction, uh, first of all, uh, Mariano Sanz is going to talk about a vision uh, which it is possible to talk about a sustainable electric uh, uh, development based on the uh, water energies nexus. In the second place, um, a person from Iberdrola uh, will talk about the main issues, how to store energy. Uh, because in Spain the problem is not the energy production, but how to store it. And in the third place, uh, uh, on behalf of IGNORE, uh, they will talk about um, the applications, the implementations that they already put in place on how to extract water uh, using the uh, solar panels, uh, energy costs that they have, and you'll see how the production of uh, kilowatts per hour with uh, solar energy are uh, cheaper, cheap or cheaper mm, than the kilowatts obtained from the net, from the grid. And the only secret we have uh, on how to produce uh, kilowatts per hour, uh, it uh, lies on um, how to store that energy, uh, how to store that energy in order to have it ready to be used later on. And uh, they will show as well another models they have uh, just uh, or coupled to containers uh, um, that they're self-sustainable that they can be used in different countries just in case they do not have any connections to the grid. Uh, so they can have uh, um, toilets, some kind of uh, uh, sanitation uh, in a compact way. Uh, later on, uh, from the Institute of Technology of Canary Islands, uh, they're going to talk about a project that is very new in Spain, in which they integrate both uh, um, a, a wind energy uh, uh, inverse or reversible jumps, as they call them, but it's how to store energy better yet. Um, um, the salination plant that is fed by uh, um, wind energy, and also uh, it supplies energy to the island and itself. And the president of uh, World Council of Civil Engineers Will, uh, 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 will present the, his vision um, of the energy in the world and how does he, seen, does he see the uh, new opportunities that new technologies are bringing to the table. I would like to explain a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit on how, what is the administration of the um, Ebro River Basin. I'm just going to say a couple of things. Uh, mm, we are an entity that takes care of the basin uh, within Europe. Uh, we integrate both energy and water. So that's why you see the symbol. You see that in the symbol of the uh, authority of the basin, actually. You see that there's water and energy combined together. That's why it was created. Uh, uh, in order to uh, obtain um, uh, to obtain supply for the uh, supply 
uh, for the population in here and also use a cheap energy, so to speak. Uh, we were talking about what was better, public or private. Uh, we have a, here, we have a model which is a mixture of both public and private and it had really good results. And um, mm, uh, basically, after uh, some sacrifices after 1926, um, uh, we achieved uh, to have a very nice amount of hectares uh, of irrigation so we can produce food. And uh, we have the third, we produce the third of the electric energy of this country. This is uh, electric energy then we combine a hydric uh, energy, then we combine thermal energy, and uh, we also observe energy as a vector, which is the main thing as of now. I'm going to um, uh, give the floor to... Well, I'd like to, say, to talk a little bit about the energetic situation in Spain now. So these are some aspects that uh, you might see tomorrow uh, uh, about the uh, Ebro River Basin. But uh, after that, I can tell you that in Spain, we do not uh, need that much of energy. There is a, over, a super habit of energy, as uh, you'll see that uh, is going to be commented. There's 108 megawatts. Uh, 808,000 megabytes is the double, the energy produced is the double of the one that is needed. Um, the problem that exists is, above all, is how to store that energy. How do we do that? And as of now, the only way of storing their energy is to keep it as a potential energy. So if we look into that, we have a nice electric grid, as in a national level, and a good service for electric, for electric supply in a national level as well. Um, and, uh, and a good amount of renewable energy, which is equal to the 49% of the patents that uh, uh, it is as of now in Spain, you know, as of today is renewable energy, as I'm telling you, according to the Mayo Gaviria, that uh, we are the fourth country in uh, wind, the sixth one in solar, and um, we are in a good rank as well for thermal solar energy. So uh, when all these energies are producing, uh, these renewables are producing energy and we cannot store that and it's not used for consumption, then uh, we're looking at the water as an energetic vector. How do we uh, manage or how do we look at the energies in Spain? We have the wind, we have the hydraulic, the one uh, based on uh, coal, the normal hydraulic, and also the firefighters, uh, uh, pardon me, also the pumpers. Um, so what we're talking about is that we always adjust that energy, that hydraulic energy. Uh, in Spain becomes gold because it allows us to combine offer and demand, which is a main driver. For example, at 4 o'clock in the morning, um, the energy, uh, the hydraulic energy is a 0 8, uh, but at noon, in any random day, uh, it is a 20%. So, what what does it mean? Uh, it means that the energy, the hydraulic energy, what we can use it for is to use it for offer and demand. Uh, so, in that sense, uh, we think that it's possible uh, to have a renewable energy scenario here. 
or uh, very uh, diversified park, as in Spain we have now. Uh, but now I'm going to uh, um, tell somebody else to talk about this so they can uh, inform us on these ideas that I just went through briefly. Uh, where are we now? Uh, it's almost there. Uh, good afternoon. I think I'm going to uh, talk a little bit uh, different of what, about what Manolo just said. Uh, what I've seen about the development of this, uh, about the course of this conference and the preparation of the world, uh, the Water World Day, I think from my own point of view, uh, we need to complement or to supplement this vision uh, uh, with, with, together with this vision I'm going to try to launch in a, 10 minutes more or less. I'm going to talk about new technologies that are changing the scenario uh, that we're looking at, that we are discussing upon, and uh, probably um, is the scenario that uh, Manuel just explained. Uh, is a very innovative uh, scenario based on what it is uh, available today. So what happened with the new technologies? What happened? It is very important uh, that we need to store in our data storage unit uh, uh, what I'm going to talk about. We're not going to talk about heavy music or uh, the sunshine. We're going to talk about um, new technologies that are being applied as of today. They're being implemented and uh, they're changing the world. Uh, should have we seen this, this very same thing 15 or 20 years ago of installation of uh, wind parks? Should have we pay attention to that new technologies? Uh, probably today, as of today, we would not have that kind of problems of the economic breakdown of the energy situation that we have right now in Spain. In that time, at that time, pardon me, uh, the alternative was uh, 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 the alternative was uh, the, there was in research at the time. It was the pumping. Uh, but it, since it was so expensive, this and that, uh, it was pushed up and uh, then gas took the place instead of pumping and gas is everything that uh, was being applied or implemented in order to modulate uh, or uh, use the wind power instead using wind power. So today we will have seen a different, a completely different scenario. So. Uh, we're going to look at the technologies that are available to us these days because they're changing that scenario. Uh, many do not agree, do not agree with, that, with uh, me, but I'm going to talk about it. Uh, uh, we're in, a, in, in the middle of a technologic uh, revolution. It's the greatest one in the human uh, days. Uh, we see a lot of discoveries. Um, and they're increasing more and more each day in an extraordinary way from the domain, I mean, trying to master the atom and uh, introducing new materials. Uh, they're bringing up to the table a vision or a point of view, an approach to the energy totally different than the one that we had up till today. So everything has changed the energy world this scenario of water usage, food, um, health, everything is changing and we need to be aware of that change because it's changing rapidly in months, probably in a very few years. Uh, these materials are uh, discovering certain proper, pro properties in which uh, uh, the synergy material, mat mat matter and energy, energy and matter and uh, we're trying to uh, master that uh, that type of uh, synergies. And we're talking about different kinds, and that we're transforming m m the matter and the energy. And we change technology. Technology 
uh, goes forward and technology allows to change and it proposes to change and the development that we are carrying out as a human civilization. Our behavior is also changing rapidly. And in the context of water and energy, we cannot avoid this. We cannot, uh, and, and, and in all the works that I've se I have seen in uh, new technologies, we're talking about this. Let's see what is gonna happen. Uh, is it, it depends on us that drastic change. So if we're talking about nanotechnology, how does it uh, impact in the uh, energy context? For example, it, it has an impact on the storage, uh, storage of electricity, uh, for example, is a change uh, against the photovoltaic um, system of prices and the electronic of power, anytime we want to link different scenarios like the water and the energy, uh, that link uh, needs to be uh, through potent electronic, uh, which combines the turbine with the net, which combines the turbine with the grid, with the wind. And that is changing absolutely. Uh, completely, uh, the control systems is changing the uh, uh, computer, computerized information technologies, uh, ICTs, and uh, above all, uh, everything is important, but above all, we have new materials. Uh, new materials that are 200 times more uh, resistant than steel, 100 times better conductors than the copper, and uh, very resilient materials to the environment and very light, very thin as the atomic uh, layers of graphene. Uh, that changes the turbines, the piping, uh, the dams, uh, everything. There are materials that at that moment, that th in this moment they're being analyzed, they're being uh, usage by the industry. They're being used by the industry, sorry about that. Uh, so we're talking about the uh, system of energy storage, which uh, can change the dramatically the energy system. Uh, we have some systems of battery uh, with lithium, uh, but lithium is combined with a polymer, which is uh, a polymer, sorry about that, which is uh, uh, combined with uh, some of the things, uh, which is a, a, a vehicle that is not really uh, going on that much today in Europe. It has, oh, sorry, it's being used in Europe and it's, it has an autonomy of 260, 300 kilometers, oh, oh, sorry, of bats. Um, and the lithium will be a, a very strategic uh, orgánica, no deja residuos, es totalmente biodegradable y nos vamos a sistemas de almacenamiento que igualan al almacenamiento del petróleo. Claro, si yo voy a utilizar un sistema, un, 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 una energía para producir movimiento o electricidad a través de un proceso térmico, pues yo solamente puedo utilizar un veintitantos por ciento de esa energía. Pero si yo la utilizo de una batería eh, cargada por medios renovables, yo voy a poder utilizar el 98% por ciento de esa energía. ¿Con qué sistema de es? ¿La batería pues, tiene poca autonomía? No es cierto. ¿Es que la batería dura poco? No es cierto. Las baterías, por ejemplo, el Tesla Raster que hoy tenemos en la calle, tienen una garantía de 15 años, 20 años, en funcionamiento dinámico para un vehículo, pero en funcionamiento estacionario tiene 40, 50 años de, de garantía. Y además se nos echan encima, gracias a la, a la nanotecnología, los supercondensadores. Olvidándonos ya del almacenamiento electroquímico, pasamos al almacenamiento electrostático, que es frío, que es totalmente... Eh, eh, duradero, etcétera. Voy, voy a intentar ir rápido. Se nos superan los límites de lo que hemos estado viendo hasta ahora. Tenemos en pequeñas dimensiones unas capacidades de almacenamiento inmensas. Si con los productos que lo hacemos son orgánicos, pues son de fácil, no de fácil, sino que son en principio de materia prima baratísima, inacabable, porque es renovable. 
y pues nos vamos a que en el mundo del almacenamiento tenemos que tener unas perspectivas de que, cuidado, no solamente... Perspectives. There are some possibilities, especially when we speak about micro storage, massive micro storage. There are millions that are decentralized in order to take advantage of local, uh, for local needs. Not a big storage uh, that is going to give a response to many local needs, spare and distributed here and there. What is the uh, change of the strategy? Because we are going to have to uh, listen to the photovoltaic associated with pumping. Photovoltaic energy is going to influence terribly the world of energy. Why? Because we uh, move on to uh, unknown photovoltaic signatures. Where we Only the ones that we have in the street we have a very low efficiency. The new ones with uh, silicon they have uh, doubled the power and, a, and the storage capacity and if we have the uh, grassenum uh, we can see 30 33% laboratorio el 47% de eficiencia energética y se espera que con los materiales we have 47 uh, energy efficiency and what does it mean that per every Square meter, we will have 50, 60, 70, or 80 percent of solar energy, which un uh, an average of one kilowatt per square kilometer. If we are taking advantage of 50 percent, we will be able to take advantage of 60, 70, or even 80 percent. We don't come here to say some nonsense when we speak about pumping um, 15 years ago in order to guarantee the energy supply, the renewable energy. Being uh, engineers, that was uh, a science fiction at that time, but no, sir, we are not witnessing science fiction. There are many of those materials at the market. We have uh, photoelectrical cells and materials that are in the laboratory and the production of which is being analyzed on an uh, industrial level. The uh, cost is minimized, uh, the response time is minimized, and therefore all the uh, photovoltaic applications for pumping for the grid, etc., uh, is filled with uh, more robust and more efficient materials now, up to the point that we have uh, the uh, uh, electronics, the power electronics, in the uh, cage of an electrical vehicle. Eh, ya estamos con el carburo de silicio, pero pasamos a... Uh, we move on to uh, electronics, and this is the big jump. The uh, eruption of electrical vehicle is the first revolution that we are feeling here. These technologies are applied to electrical vehicle, and this vehicle displaces the technical one uh, as far as we let it replace it. It is... Uh, not a technological problem, it's a socio-economical problem of the market. But it has a consumption of practically 10 times less than the average, the normal vehicles. And the efficiency is 10 percent and therefore, the, of course, uh, we have a big change here. There's no problem of autonomy. The electrical vehicles that we see in the street are very old vehicles. And, of course, this does not correspond to the current structures. We have this Tesla Roadster model. It's a technology with uh, electrical engine. We have the Panasonic batteries here of uh, polymeric lithium. Uh, this is a polymer of ultra-thin layer that seems a little bit to the condenser. And then the electrical vehicle changes the energy scenario. 
and so that it will become a scenario which will be practically electric. The energy that we will need will be electric energy mainly and the uh, electricity water vector is the one that we have to prepare with these new technologies that are in the market. This is a nano, uh, a graphene nanotube, and this is an example of uh, the use of water and energy nexus, um, electrical energy, cold electrical energy. Why? Because we must forget the thermal processes in everything that means uh, electrical generation and movement. We must forget about this because we have the technology developed already and so that we don't have to cool anything and therefore all the plants that we see nowadays uh, in biofuels, what for? If we have to uh, cool the plants, what for? The future scenario will be a scenario without uh, physical chemical processes. This is an aberration of human intelligence because we have different means. Uh, we have to use movement or electricity through movement, non-burning, not burning things. And therefore, we have the possibility of implementing a totally different uh, scenario which will enable micro-generation, micro-consumption, micro-local networks, and it will allow us to create a complex uh, policy that will be tackled by dividing this complexity and creating micro-grids that will solve the local point problems adapted to the uh, point uh, local uh, demands and needs. And we have the technology at hand in order to develop this new scenario. This new scenario changes agriculture, livestock, farming, changes. Why? Because the storage systems are changing. I'm going to de devote land to the Nexus uh, water and energy, land and energy, and my business is going to increase, and therefore I have a context to solve, to be able to solve problems, local problems, regional problems, and of course I cannot uh, lose my time looking for other technologies. I have technologies at hand. We have to take into account the new technologies and the impact that they are going to uh, have on all human activities. We must uh, avoid the fact that they limit the, uh, repeat the uh, actions that we have been taking. If we have to solve uh, the problems of hunger, of sustainability, we have, we do have the tools. We just lack the political will and the general will to do it. Buenas tardes. Gracias. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, basically, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna dip in. I mean, jump in, and this is like a loop. Uh, Mariana is contradicting Manolo. Then Clemente comes over and says what Manolo was saying. Uh, I think uh, Mariano, what he just said is the future. Uh, with no doubt, but as of today and in many years, I think there's many years, uh, oh, there's a big problem of magnitude. And you're going to see at the, that at the end of my presentation. So you're going to see some figures that uh, crossing them with the uh, cells um, performance and the lithium and all those things, uh, um, solar as well. I'm really convinced that the solar one should be the uh, uh, the solution for the energy creation. Here, solar, pardon me. Uh, uh, but as of today, with the technology that we have today, and uh, with the one that we can maybe use next for next years, uh, in order to um, balance these figures, I'm going to show we we should. Uh, fill up Spain with uh, solar panels. 
uh, uh, this is, uh, I'm going to talk about a, a present situation. Two months ago, I did that that I'm bringing here. Uh, this is a subject that has a very big investment uh, level. We're talking about 100 million euros or hundreds of million euros, of, of uh, euros, sorry. Uh, and I'm going to introduce the subject uh, saying that the water is essential to produce uh, electricity. And uh, of course, you already know this. Um, uh, the conventional with uh, uh, fuel, coal and gas, nuclear ones, and uh, the new ones uh, with uh, biology as, and we have the thermosolar, the new ones, and uh, biomass. Um, and in the case of hydroelectricity, uh, it's the only available uh, raw material, and uh, that's the water, and that is obvious. Uh, but that nexus uh, between uh, water and energy is very much intense, uh, particularly in the central, in the plants of hydroelectric pumping. Um, and I'm going to try to uh, sum up this thing. I think it's uh, been already said. It allows the exceeding consumption of uh, of uh, energy uh, uh, created by the nuclear plants, but um, in Spain, in the, we've seen that the nuclear plants are uh, um, producing energy in a continuous way. But in Spain, uh, we're looking to uh, different hours of need. Um, and uh, that's why we had the pumping hydroelectric plants. It's not a modern technology. It has at least like 40 years, it's at least 40 years old. And that allows um, uh, um, the nuclear ones to continue um, working continuously. Sorry about that. Uh, um, the um, the ones that are just depending on the hour are the pump, hydroelectric pumping, and and uh, that goes against, for example, the type of production that a wind plant will produce because. Uh, these ones will produce uh, the energy at all times, depending on whether the wind blows or not. So it's not that much uh, reliable. Um, but the problem is that we cannot store that. We cannot export that either. And there's another technology like compressed air or um, uh, salt mines or, uh, I mean, uh, thermal storage in salt mines. Uh, but uh, um, we try to generate cheap technology and produce it when it's uh, very expensive. So that's the way we can take advantage of it. And the only technology is of today, as I was saying, and available in uh, some years as in a mass way and very, uh, very quick is the uh, hydroelectric pumping for the consumption and uh, other things. And also in case of... Um, uh, failure, uh, failure of other energy, energies, uh, instantaneous failures, for example, like a nuclear plant will stop uh, uh, production uh, uh, like 1,000 megawatts, for example. Uh, then uh, we have the occasion to react instantaneously and uh, pump into the red, into the grid, uh, a lot of bots. Uh, uh, this is not only the failure of a nuclear uh, plant, but it was not particularly of a nuclear plant, but uh, uh, it was related to the uh, transportation grid. Um, so if a nuclear plant or a, a big thermal group uh, cannot transport that energy, that energy will not be poured into the grid. So that creates a failure. Uh, solar and wind energies uh, can uh, disappear in any moment because, uh, uh, for example, there's no sun in a day or there's no wind, and only the hydroelectric um, energy, particularly by means of pumping, uh, is able to do this.
uh, all this uh, allows us to use uh, the or allows us to to achieve the optimization of the electric system, and these uh, has a greater availability of uh, ener energy because we can have that uh, energy whenever we need it, and the uh, uh, the, the electric pumping allows us to have more avail uh, energy available and therefore uh, there is more water uh, available as well for irrigation for example. So this will ensure that there is a, or guarantee that there is a very um, better uh, availability of the energies. Uh, so I'm bringing um, an, uh, an example, Cortes de la Muela, which is a big installation, is a big facility of pumping. And uh, this started in uh, around the 80s. And uh, this is still, la, la Muela is very close. Is the, oh, sorry, is this other one? Cortés La Muela is uh, set, established in the Júcar, which is a river in Spain, and it has a mixed pump in uh, between an upper reservoir, uh, which is called La Muela, which has 20 uh, uh, cubic hectometers of capacity. Uh, we have two points, I mean, two views, if you want. Uh, there is a jump of... Uh, 525 meters. Uh, it, it, this is taking advantage of the nature itself. And uh, uh, at the bottom, uh, we have the pool of uh, Cortes, uh, has um, 117 uh, cubic hectometer, which is uh, located in the Huca River. So there you can see two intakes. Um, and uh, those were finished in the year 1988 and uh, there were uh, two were built uh, uh, foreseeing an extension of it and then um, there was a piping system set in place as well uh, with three uh, branches as well and the subterranean uh, central and the La Muela, the second one, uh, taking advantage of the already existing facility, uh, another a subterranean um, a f a pipe is being put into place as well, which is not quite parallel to the one that you can see, but um, uh, it also reaches another a subterranean central. Um, and you can see the diagram here, the uh, drawing here. Uh, so you can see what it's all about. And you can see the profile of the work. It is a, a totally subterraneous work. And uh, that allows us to take into account the environment. Uh, and the biggest impact was the treatment of... Um, ...of uh, places where... ...tiene como del orden de dumping places and uh, uh, the pipes have a diameter of five meters and then we have an inclination of a pipe of 46 degrees and uh, uh, then we have a horizontal, a horizontal uh, belt as well for the pipe pin that has 53 meters but uh, I think uh, that there is a mismatch of old data and new data. I'm sorry about that. And we're talking about uh, the Muela, La Muela 1 with the three groups in the year 1988 and the La Muela 2 with the four groups. Um, uh, and if we combine both together, as we see, uh, 1,478 megawatts, uh, that means uh, a lot of patents. Uh, being achieved, a lot of uh, uh, power, pardon me, being achieved every hour. Um, and with uh, lithium batteries, uh, we should have a lot of batteries together to store all that energy.
Es que empezamos, sí, sí, lo he entendido. Bien. De acuerdo, de acuerdo. No, no, pero entonces hay que, hay que dejar clara una cosa. Then we have to state something to make something clear. Small solutions can be appropriate solutions, but they are not useful for uh, technical changes. Bueno, y en bombeo, pues 1289. ¿eh? In uh, pumping, 1289. It is the biggest, uh, largest uh, pumping station in all Europe. Yo me sé mucho para decir, pues que si se ha hecho, será que hace falta, ¿no? Pues... Well, this is important. Well, this is all, folks. Bueno, buenas tardes. Yo... Good afternoon. I am again talking about small things. We like small in general. Uh, I don't know what he said, Manuel. Ah, they are going to change. Uh, Ignore is going to speak about uh, solar uh, in integration with uh, pumping. And then the Canary Institute of Research is going to speak about the El Hierro Island because this is more complex because you will see this wind uh, energy and the reversible jump plus desalination plus supply and therefore we are gaining into complexity. Okay, well first of all thanks to the organization for having invited us. As you have said, we are going to comment on two applications that are already developed in order to use photovoltaic solar energy in different scopes. It is an intermediate step between the macro and the future. We are the micro, the current micro. These are solutions that today can be reused in any point of Spain, as we will see, or any point of the world, any part of the world. You have to allow us uh, to uh, introduce uh, these two projects or applications. What is Elegnor? Maybe you don't know us. Elegnor is one of the main uh, Spanish companies in uh, development and construction of engineering, development and construction, and, and development of new uh, technologies. We are having 55 years experience. We have 13,000 uh, employees and a turnover of around 2,000 million euros and presence in 30 countries. Why do we participate in this session? Because in our group, we have different agents that are interested 100% because in the, in the world, because this is our job, in the world of uh, water and energy development. I wouldn't say that we have a priority role, but it is our day-to-day -day work. We have the Elecnor Foundation, which tries to um, develop uh, development projects in uh, those countries where Elecnor has a presence. There is the funding aligned uh, for development uh, projects. It is called FOCUS, this uh, funding line. And on the other side, you will see three companies of our group which are 100% involved in water and energy. Tersa, the company Tersa, the uh, manufacturer of photovoltaic modules and electronic solutions for the scope. Tirsa co as a company in the scope of construction and the uh, execution of uh, hydro uh, power uh, works and uh, the third company which is uh, involving any job, any infrastructure work. This means a wide experience on the world of photovoltaic uh, experience. We are accumulating more than 200 megawatts 
that have been made basically in the last two years. In the year 2007, 2008, Italy, France, Argentina, United States, and yet there's some. Uh, we have an experience of 32 years. This means that we are uh, present in four continents. As for the water sector, we have basically working on uh, treatment and irrigation, and our experience is very large. What are the applications, these two applications? These are two projects, different projects. Both of them use... Uh, photovoltaic uh, solar energy and they transform it into electrical um, projects that have to do with water. They are 100% related with what we are dealing with. These two share certain aspects and they are different at the same time. They both use the uh, energy of the sun that we can say it is and, uh, uh, well, it is eternal. It is not, of course, but uh, to our purposes it is. It is, not. it is a reality that we can use it in uh, economically viable projects, uh, especially if they are isolated, but also to other projects that are not as isolated or silo projects. One of them, we will see that it is interesting for those places where there is not an electrical supply available or electricity supply available. And in the other case, it is a project that can be used in any scope of any developed country. We are going to start with the home project, the multifunctional sustainable model for silo projects. What are the strengths of this project? As it is isolated, we can use this project uh, when we don't have a supply, an electricity supply. This project um, is executed uh, near here, at one hour distance, and I invite any of you to see it. It is in Ayerbe, in Huesca. You will be able to see this system. And it is based in four functional elements. The first one being a photovoltaic plant. We generate electricity locally and it is added to the grid. Then we have a water treatment plant. Uh, water before it is drinking water, I mean before the use. And this enables us to uh, think about uh, offering uh, public uses and a functional space. The uh, water treatment plant that has been installed has two uh, independent treatment lines. They have a very different technology that should be, could be sh suitable for waters having a very different quality at a rate of 4,000 liters per hour. The uh, photovoltaic plant in order for it to generate, to consume uh, all throughout the day. It is installed in uh, battery type storage and it can be placed basically in any part of the world. It has batteries because logically the uh, sun resource has uh, two problems. During the night we cannot generate and the um, problems that the clouds generate also um, forces us to use this type of type, uh, storage type. Well, and we also have a library, a multifunctional space, including a library, a PC area, uh, that is public facilities consisting uh, uh, with a dimension of 60 square meters. The other uh, project is Easy Sun Pump, is a pumping photovoltaic system that can be used also in any part of the world. It can be modeled. It has a direct pumping uh, system without batteries. And this uh, other project is uh, fully applicate, applicable, applicated. Sure. Vale. Applied, sorry.
It can be repeated in any pumping uh, station, but you are invited to see it, and if you go there, you would see a solved problem, a direct pumping station without batteries. Just to make a reflection on what has been happening up to now and what is going to happen in the future without uh, getting into Mariano's speech, uh, but adding to this speech, uh, the problems are the typical problems of the photovoltaic energy and the water, and they have been added one to the other, and they have been applied to for many by many companies. Uh, it, for uh, domestic uh, uses and applications, we are uh, accustomed to seeing some uh, photographs where this type of uh, application is installed between uh, 2 and 5 kilowatts for uh, homes, for uh, livestock farming, etc., and for uh, drinking water and for uh, localized irrigation purposes. Today, it is a thing that has been in, uh, installed and applied in different installations. It is a challenge where people of Elecnor and Tersa who have developed this uh, anti-pumping system uh, have uh, developed the scope of big powers, that means uh, well, of course, if compared with uh, Mariano's data, these uh, should be applications that should be, uh, could be called uh, small ones, but of course uh, they are, let's say, middle-sized ones uh, for irrigation users and for fisheries. The batteries are expensive equipment and therefore they are not economically viable for water treatment. We will add to this, uh, these batteries to this system at a very low cost, and we will be able to have isolated or silo installations for these applications. Um, uh, this solution can be adapted to multiple solutions depending on the existence or non-existence of a previous electrical supply with uh, an electrogen uh, group or net or the mains, the grid. It will depend on the power required for the installation and it will also depend on the consumption curve required for, by the installation. The application has been demonstrated by the irrigators uh, communities and it is a silo installation. It works with electrical photovoltaic uh, source as the single source of energy. As you will see, the power curve will be the curve enabled by sun that is uh, at, the, at dawn, at dusk, and at the peak hours of uh, solar, solar peak hours of the day. It can be applied uh, in any point in Spain, depending on the local regulations. It can be developed very easily. Uh, hybrid systems can be applied and can be developed uh, very easily as well as assisted systems. And this will allow us to offer different power curves depending on the application needed. We will have flatter uh, curves or rounder curves depending on the needs. They can be uh, adapted to the uh, day use or the night use. Uh, we will have some circuits and some electronic uh, circuits that have overcome the technical bar barriers that have been uh, encountered up to now. We will see a relationship between available energy and received energy. The sun, when there are clouds, uh, has a cannot really shine the same way, so we will have some perturbations, some uh, this, uh, decrease. And uh, the solar radiation, when done at dusk, dusk, of course, will be lower 
we will see a curve and the pumps and the hydraulic circuits cannot really work in these situations and electronics have to be adapted to solving this uh, binom water and energy when faced to solar uh, changes and then of course we have to solve also photovoltaic problems uh, and water problems like uh, the dynamic pressure control or detection of uh, dry functioning or the problem of the startups. Um, we will have a project of small power or big powers will we generating uh, nominal power problems. These are the problems that have to be, uh, that have been encountered. The solution is the application that has been developed. In Balduxo, the uh, La Punta Irrigators communities, it is in Castellón, in the Valencian community, at uh, two hours distance here, from here. And there is a dripping irrigation uh, pumping system and this is where this application has taken place. Ah, we will see that it has a photovoltaic generator and a pumping uh, area as well. Uh, the photovoltaic installation has uh, 124 kilowatts uh, on the peak time. And they have a control system um, uh, which allows us to uh, combine it with a hydroelectric uh, part. Uh, has a regulation pole as well. The water that is in, in, taken uh, for pumping, and from there uh, we just water the land. Hmm. What are the main data? Uh, we have two pumps. Uh, then we have uh, uh, a flow that is uh, more or less 400 uh, meter uh, cubic meters, uh, and then. Uh, uh, you can see that on the slides. And then uh, uh, we have the data that uh, provides some sense to the project because the, 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 project, uh, the project has some sense because it's uh, profitable. Uh, we need to take everything into account. But if we uh, um, take into account uh, the side of solar energy, the cubic meters that we are generating, and that we can project it, we can project it actually to the years that we want because the, um, um, those models have a guarantee, uh, despite the degradation of that, it will be uh, 25 years, more or less, uh, that we can use that. And if we consider the investment cost, um, 1.5 uh, euro per batt uh, on the electric um, electronic uh, installation is not that much. And if we compare it to the cost that this irrigation community, uh, users uh, community is uh, having, uh, it will be 3 or 7 percent. And if we compare those data, is that um, there are systems that economically have some sense. So uh, do we're doing that with the uh, uh, tariff B3, B3 P3, sorry, uh, with the most favorable one, favorable one. but um, uh, to sum up, uh, this installation, uh, depending on the assumptions that we want to do based on the year uh, usage of energy, uh, this has some sense, and it would be repaid in 10 years with the favorable conditions, and uh, more than that, if the energy increment uh, improvement was less. Um, Generation of uh, kilo, kilowatt per hour uh, photovoltaic uh, is uh, less than the B3. Uh, so we think that there is a good application, uh, 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 an implementation on that uh, today uh, that is clear and uh, uh, we can apply uh, these uh, uh, photovoltaic stations very well. So to sum up, there's uh, uh, two solutions, uh, two applications that we can consider today. Uh, 
one with multiple applications, uh, which is the system uh, H2OME, uh, which allows us to offer water in a, a kind of uh, isolated areas uh, with a 200 euro investment. Um, because I emphasize that each project has a different solution, a specific solution. And on the other hand, we have a pumping system uh, with a, a power uh, rank very wide, and uh, uh, which is being used as well for big power uh, usage. It could be uh, both used for an isolated situation or as a hybrid uh, system. So very, thank you very much. And uh, uh, I hope uh, this presentation uh, will be uploaded. And you can, if you are very interested, you can either contact me or my. Bueno, pues buenas tardes. Yo, en primer lugar. First of all, I want to thank uh, the organization, particularly Josefina and Manuel. Uh, 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 for giving me this opportunity uh, to participate here. I'm saying that we go to the little scale now because we are selling that uh, Canary Islands are a lab uh, of um, electric energy and water energy. So before talking about the year Iceland, I'm going to be very uh, graphic, very quick. Uh, the presentation is going to be in English. So the idea is that you can upload it and you can uh, look on it. If you wanted to, I'm going to talk about the Canary Islands situation, what uh, led us to think about this as a laboratory. We have, uh, um, in, the, in the island, we have two million people distributed in a different way. Uh, we have a lot of tourists of 10 millions and 12 millions, more or less, so uh, per year. So we only depend on the uh, oil resources as of today, but uh, we have the historic problem of uh, water scarcity. So the water is very expensive. We have, it, it takes a lot of energy to pump that water and to sanitize that water as well. Uh, so those are things that we're trying to do uh, at a scale, uh, at a level of innovation. And the will that it exists as of today is to be independent both uh, regarding water and uh, energy. And it's very difficult. It's not um, uh, the idea of a lab is because what we do in an island uh, is more difficult to be uh, done or replicated in a continent which is the part I would like to uh, explain uh, before talking about the uh, year island. I'm going to talk about this briefly because uh, I'm going to talk about what uh, 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 led us to uh, produce uh, energy and use water in a conventional way. Um, uh, uh, we have, uh, we are leading uh, in Spain on the usage of water. That's not require such a lot of energy, but it requires energy at the same time. We're talking about a kilowatt per, me per square meter, um, uh, cubic meter, pardon me. And um, the nexus water energy, which brings us here, is that uh, all that water that we uh, treat and desalinate uh, uh, is uh, used for purpose, and that's not very easy. So 15% of the energy in Canary Island, we don't need heat. Uh, um, all the electricity is consumed in the cycle of water. There are islands that depend 100% in the desalination, desalination of water. And if there's not energy, there's no water. And if there's no water, there, that would cause a lot of problems. And if there's no water, we cannot live. And um, there is a lot of energy, but we cannot, it, it's very difficult for us to uh, put it into the grid. And that's the problem we are facing uh, on the reform. And uh, the renewable energy is very cheaper in comparison to the other one. Um, uh, we're talking about uh, that the uh, wind one would cost like five or six cents, and the, one, uh, the electricity or the energy produced by fall is, is very much expensive uh, in comparison to the other one. So that's the challenge we're facing in Canary Island. So this is a picture of the laboratory 
uh, that we have there and that we try to promote and dis disseminate within Europe. We're trying to show that everything that we do in the islands uh, can be replicated in uh, uh, developing countries and uh, probably depressed uh, regions. Um, I'm going to talk as well about the sustainability uh, development as well. And the ITC, uh, we're trying to support this policy of on development. We've been talking about this uh, for a long time, not only on this, uh, we've been working also on environmental technology and uh, very fragile and weak um, 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 environments as well. Um, but uh, we started a, a line of a path of work uh, in order to develop a small systems because um, uh, in 1998, sorry about that, um, and I think uh, as for the water, we're talking about a small systems because it's, it's needed in a small level uh, and uh, it needs to be, therefore it needs to be a uh, because in the Canary Island part of me, it needs to be uh, fed with the uh, renewable energies. Uh, we were the first one, uh, the salinating water um, uh, from the 1997, so that has been like 50 years ago. So this is a development that is ours. Is uh, We have a patent on that, and we have uh, installed that plant as well in some countries in, in Africa. Uh, uh, technology is very intensive uh, and it's also using solar power and we are um, uh, developing little plants uh, that uh, might provide energy up to 50,000 inhabitant pub, uh, cities or villages. Um, so we're having a lot of demand on the African countries. We have another one uh, like uh, the salination plant in the Canary Island that is connected to the net, to the grid. And um, we were kind of the first one to uh, uh, build uh, wind plants and that reduces a lot the energy cost. And now I'm going to um, talk about the Yarrow Island. We've been talking about on this field, like in integral projects of uh, supply of water and energy. And uh, in Mauritania, Morocco, Tunisia, uh, uh, Cape Town, Senegal, and ECOWAS. And Nigeria, you know, on Senegal are one of the, the poorest countries in the world. And uh, they do not have access to uh, drink drinkable water, drinking water. Um, and uh, we need to. Uh, um, join some either Canary Island companies or uh, big companies to join us uh, in order to uh, provide these uh, supplies to these communities. So we are using micronets and uh, we also work on this, uh, particularly in uh, uh, we're trying to do intelligent micronets and uh, we've install them in Mauritania, Morocco, uh, both this, uh, uh, going ahead with a desalination plant of brine and uh, seawater. Um, and personal uh, and uh, in a politician scale as well, and a level, pardon me, as well. We're trying to uh, educate the people of those countries. <clears throat> what about energy? We have a problem that we want a lot of uh, renewables, but our networks are weak and they are isolated, and therefore we have to, to store energy. This is the big challenge in the Canary Islands. We have to work uh, with a reverse pumping, uh, whatever is possible, with the idea that we have a very good wind regime. We have the Elysium wind in spring, and when we want to put the, uh, our megawatts, our system has 3,000 megawatts, we will have a surplus of uh, wind energy. 
and we will have to store it somewhere on a on a big scale. We are going to do it in uh, wind farms that have a reversible system. Another option <coughs> is uh, subsea electrical interconnections. We have San Lanzarote and Fuerteventura that is already that are already interconnected, and the next one may be Fuerteventura with Gran, the Gran Canaria. Maybe we will save ourselves the cable and foster microgeneration in Fuerteventura and in Gran Canaria in order to save us this effort. And then uh, we have the uh, distribution networks. Uh, as for water, our idea is to produce, to minimize the energy cost in all processes related to water. We are working on a plan in order to reduce this cost. And here you have um, the costs of desalination according to the different islands. Uh, we have 15%, for example, in Natarote. And this is just a summary. You will be able to check, check it later on. We want to improve efficiency, water efficiency, to also increase the uh, contribution of renewables associated to the integral water cycle. And, um, well, the uh, Dierro example, uh, the idea was to have an island uh, using 100% renewables, taking advantage of the combination of water and energy. We have 10,500 inhabitants. Uh, we have a very important and strong uh, ecological will on the part of the population, and we want to generate energy. We have a peak of 7 uh, megawatts. It is the uh, most expensive um, electrical system in Spain, in fact. We have been working uh, since the 80s on this idea in the 90s, uh, the uh, local government has uh, signed the uh, Sustainable Development Plan, and we are working on this idea. Uh, we, as a public technological center of the Canary Islands, we are working, and in 2004 we created the Corona del Viento uh, Company, which is the one that is going to exploit this um, resource and this idea. Well, this is the uh, best example of the water and energy binome. And as for uh, renewables, well, this uh, tank is a regula regulator tank. Well, this is a farm, that, a wind farm that injects energy to the mains or to the grid. And when due to technical reasons you cannot uh, put more electricity in the grid, we uh, use this electricity for natural deposits. So Arriba is a boiler area. Yeah, in a pequeño vaso. Chamber. And um, well, we can enlarge it, connecting it to another one. We have a surplus of wind energy, and therefore, through a turbine we uh, convert it into a continuous source of energy. These are the dimensions. Um, you can see the upper reservoir with 400,000 uh, cubic meters and the lower reservoir with 200,000. And you can see the diagram and you will see some photographs and you will finish with the photographs. This is a 3D uh, map that we did three years ago, and this is the reality. This is the crater that is the upper reservoir. We have emptied it. These are trucks or lorries for you to see an idea, to have an idea of the dimensions. We have um, isolated it with a membrane, and you see people here, the different construction phases of the upper uh, reservoir. The, uh, it was finished one year ago, and these are the pipes, uh, more than three kilometers. And the system has uh, become more expensive because we had to put some of the pipes underground. The lower reservoir, 
Then we have the Aero Power Station with four Pelton turbines with an inertia wheel for an additional inertia of six seconds because the system can vary very quickly and the island cannot have a blackout. And therefore, uh, the delay has to be it's six seconds and we have to react to be able to react very quickly. Well, we can regulate uh, depending on the wind available. This is the, these are the pumps, the 1,500, and this is the, the hub, the pump hub. And we have these 1,500 uh, pumps. These are the works, working day and night two years ago. We cannot connect the park, the farm, because we have got the uh, system with a single uh, system, and there is no other example of this in the world. There is, uh, it is a hydro wind project. There are similar projects in the other islands, in Gran Canaria, in Tenerife, in La Palma, and in La Gomera, and we will see how to tackle these projects uh, jointly when uh, the electricity is installed. I don't know if it's going to be tackled individually or jointly. Thank you very much. Somebody said today in a slide that this is a race, resistance race, uh, but it is a marathon indeed. I want to give some few examples and I want to, or messages. The leitmotiv in this conference is the, or the motto, uh, here is uh, the nexus water and energy the first uh, example is uh, the uh, hydrologic and the water cycle. Energies of different kinds uh, give us uh, the possibility to use water to generate more energies, more energy, and we have to see different things that uh, occur in nature because learning from nature we will um, have a better way to do things. So therefore, everything we do, uh, it, although it's in a different level, uh, uh, we need to take into account this interaction of water energy uh, that we have in the hydrologic cycle. After this uh, introduction, as I said before, I'm going to give like uh, five ideas. Uh, water energy are not very well distributed. Uh, or at least distributed uh, in a fashion uh, like the human being like. So a lot of uh, people, a lot of part of the population in the world do not have uh, access to safe water, so to speak. So a uh, big part of it is that the, the developed co uh, countries uh, need, uh, they, they just realize that they need the not developed countries because they need to import uh, uh, food and they're not so sufficient in energy. Because uh, um, this is a, 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 a question that is uh, very much present, and uh, in this decade we had a lot of um, uh, conflicts, war conflicts, because of this, and um, uh, the population do not want to be uh, impacted in their uh, life quality. Uh, what do we have uh, from the big picture? What do we see? Um, China. India, Europe uh, are, kind of, uh, are areas that have uh, more population than the water resources. Uh, so happens in Africa. Latin, Latin America is uh, exceeding that. But um, uh, that makes uh, the things to be globalized, particularly in the water uh, food related. We have a very worrying situation. Um, uh, uh, on what in regard of I mean regarding the access of uh, 
uh, water, there is a lot of uh, part of a population in the world that do not have access to um, uh, uh, drinking water nor treated water. So that tells you a lot about the generosity that humankind has uh, to one another. And uh, we should intensify mechanisms um, to work on this because although uh, some other millennium goals are going to be achieved, uh, we're not going to even achieve the one of reducing by a half the population that do not have access to water. So as for energy, what can we say? 30% of a population consumes 80% of the energy. So there is a big asymmetry. And if we look at it in an image, we can see that uh, really the electricity shows a, a, a duality or a situation, a dual situation, particularly worrying in the world. Um, at this moment because the world is becoming more electrified, so to speak. <clears throat> if we have a thousand people that do not have water and two other thousand that do not have uh, access to other things and uh, um, a lot of millions that do not have energy, there's a lot of, uh, there's another thousand uh, thousands of populations that do not have uh, access to decent uh, uh, supply, both water and energy. Uh, those are the thousand um, uh, million that are at the bottom. And the uh, sub-Saharan Africa is the best example that we can show as of today. So at this, as of now, um, this energy, um, uh, the air energy is seeing the threats maybe is uh, uh, thinking about the problems. Uh, one day we're going to see the uh, uh, fossil fuels um, a um, um, We need to be worried about that. The water was a poor uh, ally, but now we uh, um, devote a whole chapter to the water. What happened here? never happened before in the uh, strictly energetic found, uh, forums uh, they're talking about this um, triple A uh, in Spanish the availability uh, access and uh, where uh, we can talk about the synergies of uh, water and food and we do not know when this is going to happen but we need to uh, um, have again uh, or replenish uh, somehow the energy of the f fossil fuels like in, a, in the US they use in the gas um, um, in an attempt to um, delay this and uh, Europe um, invested in renewable energies um, so where am I going with this in this sense, I feel very proud of being European because I think Europe is in the right path and uh, with a lot of sacrifice, um, uh, showing that the renewable energies are part of the solution. They're very flexible and feasible. Uh, they have less uh, CO2, CO2 emissions uh, together with the nuclear plants. Uh, and, uh, but the problem is that they need uh, some support and storage. And the other problem I want to bring out to the table is that um, um, uh, we need to learn about it. And the developed countries need uh, to pay that uh, learning process to um, uh, put it available to the rest of the humanity somehow. So, uh, that need of storage, as we were talking about before, since we and you can see that we're studying on that, probably science will uh, bring us some solutions to that. Uh, the reality is that 99% of the storage capacity in the world uh, comes through the uh, uh, reversible pumping plants. Um, uh, and another message I want to convey to you is that the hydroelectric energy um, 
that uh, is called by some the Ferrari of the energy. We still need to invest on that. Or uh, is a mature energy is renewable and uh, uh, still can uh, produce a lot of electricity and is the best support for these uh, renewable energies that are some some of them intermittent. Uh, so up to the 85% of the energy is renewable and uh, uh, a big percentage of the used energy in Brazil will be um, the 80% of the energy consumes consumption and uh, but in this in the graphic that you can see uh, you can see the uh, potentially has in Asia they only take advantage of 22% in America only under 33% as you can see in the uh, draft uh, it has uh, good usage to mitigate the gases uh, for the greenhouse effect in the world um, and I'm gonna give you a brief uh, what is going on in the world I do not belong to any global uh, organization but I'm just uh, I just asked for data and uh, I just want to see I just wanted to see what is going on so if you see the World Bank they have an investment in water energy depending on the regions and the technologies and I see now that this scale of a million dollars in 2012 we're talking about the uh, uh, 16 US dollars per year and uh, you can see as well uh, the intensification of uh, treatment plants and uh, if we're talking about uh, who are the donors so to speak um, um, I uh, was very pleased that Spain um, is kind of the donors uh, for uh, water matters and then there's Europe and uh, uh, China and Brazil as well very active on that issue and in energy we're talking about zero to a hundred billion dollars US dollars and there is a big activity uh, in um, uh, cooperation projects public private uh, three gigabyte uh, in, in coloration in the whole world and um, we're not only providing funding but they're from the year 2005 they have a program where they're mitigating the risk in developing countries and uh, um, uh, doing certain type of operations and they're bring and they're coming into that question uh, I know that Diego is over here that's why I'm um, uh, uh, bringing these subjects to the table here um, there is uh, hydroelectric um, plants in Africa uh, where they had a partial credit of guarantee um, in Botswana uh, and there's also micro operations where they associate where we're associated associating water and energy is uh, there is a program for Central Asia and they're working in different countries different parts and uh, uh, water energy and together with other factors we have developed or there's been developed a development program regarding energy and the nexus between water and energy uh, related to productivity and also with the global I mean the world the world bank and other uh, public institutions and uh, both um, nationals and national and international institutions and se ha lanzado el yo si radio era por saber uh, it's been launched other uh, programs as well there's other things that are, uh, are being done uh, there so micro hydroelectric is being funded uh, together uh, in a series of uh, actions or uh, like in Afghanistan uh, that are being quite successful in that uh, particular matter of energy and also in the region of Nanganar which uh, the water is uh, in I mean taken from uh, irrigation channel 
and uh, uh, otra fuente de información pues eh, uh, information uh, uh, source um, um, about water energy uh, the 30% of the actions that they're doing is uh, water treatment uh, yeah, uh, that is um, on behalf of the Inter-American Bank, Bank sorry, and um, um, they're talking about climate change and renewable energies as well. Uh, they're carrying out several studies on the hydric aspect of it. Acerca de la World Commission. <clears throat> Uh, so the uh, Inter-American Bank of Development uh, had the checklist of environmental and social uh, aspects that, uh, before, uh, that they verify before they, fund, they give some funding to the projects. There is some information that you can have available and the, uh, uh, what do they take advantage of as of today as for hydric um, uh, resources. So multilateral organisms are getting uh, uh, sensitive to those uh, issues, um, renewable and also hydric, hydric and um, and. Uh, También la ECID con el departamento del fondo de cooperación. And, and some of them are. Uh, um, bringing some funds to some countries uh, 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 so they can uh, attend the needs of uh, rural areas. And so in some other countries, uh, you need to think that those are funds that are given uh, without refunding um, um, back because um, they're giving them for free. Thank you very much. Bueno, pues muy breve. So briefly, uh, uh, please uh, come over here and because uh, they can uh, answer whatever you want. Talking about cost on the pumping together with the uh, wind or so, pardon me, solar power. O mejor que hable César. Well, it is better that Thessa speaks. Thank you very much. I represent the uh, sufferers uh, sector. Here you have spoken. All of you have spoken. Es lo que pasa en el mundo subdesarrollado, que a mí ahí. Eh, en principio creo que investigación toda y ayuda toda. Um, well, we have to think that uh, at the table we are speaking more of a Spanish situation. I have to say here that I will start by the point I wanted to finish, to end with. Y, un, y no una energía que me arruine. ¿Vale? Well, Tomás ha spoken about the wind energies, ok. Uh, I wouldn't say that we are doing uh, well, uh, not considering nuclear. It's ok, but uh, the other day I saw a debate on the communication media speaking about the. Well, it came very well about uh, after the. Uh, about the auction. Uh, well, they were speaking about 25 megawatts uh, per night up to uh, five. But you forgot to say that this energy, wind energy, we, are, we the users are paying it at 81 and a half euros. You were talking about the solar energy. Well, solar energy is okay, but here we have put four megawatts of solar energy with a grant of 525% uh, uh, over the prices of the pool. 
and they uh, go to the um, electricity. But the sad reality is that me, since the year 2008 up to now, we have increased a hundred percent of energy. Of course, um, in the uh, I belong to the high consumers group, and I represent the group that is uh, consuming 2.3 percent of the national consumption. Just by way of example. I can say that Adif is now uh, at the level of 2.2. We, ha we, uh, we have overcome Adif. The concern is a very serious one. Here we have spoken of micro solutions in photovoltaic. In a way, photovoltaic in uh, developing countries could be very very good because uh, maybe if they have a pump of 50,000 uh, kilowatts uh, and I represent a, a, a place where we um, uh, transport the water uh, in 200 kilometers and if I don't have uh, sun and uh, water then the channels will overflow and therefore, I need a, a, a balance on the flow. And they're providing it, but it's very, uh, yeah, it's very expensive. And secondly, as because uh, uh, we have already debts on that, and uh, we have um, uh, in the coming years, uh, uh, it's going to be still some debt, and we still. Uh, creating not only the real estate uh, problem but also energy problem in this country. And uh, we've had uh, many meetings with the, uh, the uh, councillors of the basin. Uh, but we pay because we're forced to that for 25 years and uh, all the energy that is produced that is renewable uh, needs to be bought and it has preference and we need to pay that and everything goes to the invoice for electricity it's not to go into the ministry is uh, so these two people are representing a deficit in the tariff so do you know what the new councillors are telling me uh, they're telling me that they're having a very serious problem, not only with the irrigation users, but all, also with the industry of uh, the basin. Uh, in a globalized world uh, uh, where we pay all the energy, we're not uh, very well competitive. Solutions that you're providing uh, are good. Uh, a user of irrigation of a dwell that has some regulation, this and that. Um, um, everything goes very well, but for the big industry that has to open every day, and there's a lot of uh, positions of, uh, I mean, a lot of employees, we need a, a security somehow, we need some guarantees. What is what we can do as of today? and uh, we don't have a special tariffs uh, but because of the competitive law uh, but for example france has that tariff and uh, germany has that too and they're paying the energy as of a 50 percent uh, less of the price that we're paying at here in spain it's just a, a problem that i uh, uh, bring here is uh, it's very nice, uh, as I said, um, for a conference uh, where uh, we, are, we should be very happy to live where we live out, uh, because, or maybe, maybe we should think of uh, 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 maybe that there's a lot of people that do not have water, do not have access to treatment water, but we live where we live at, and uh, of course, it's uh, 
there's a big risk uh, f uh, for the energy system, um, national energy system in this country. And the way we, uh, the approach we have on that, and if we don't solve this, it's going to be a problem. So, as the organization is talking about, uh, Cesar, I want to tell you, I want to convey to you this message of uh, this situation of uh, uh, not very competitive, that Spain is not very competitive. Uh, don't let that think, don't let us think that uh, Europe has made a mistake um, using renewable energies. Uh, uh, so, we are the first ones, and uh, uh, this is a problem where we uh, need to add different technologies. Uh, sorry, you cannot hear if the person is not using a microphone, uh, therefore the translation or interpretation cannot be provided. I'm sorry about that, and it's not, we're not talking. Okay. Both of the interpreters are leaving now. Uh, this is a restriction of time, uh, but this is going to still be connected. Um, the streaming will still be connected, so you can still debate on this. You can still hear that uh, through the streaming, but uh, 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 since this is pretty much local, I don't think there is a lot of English speakers connected in, to the streaming. Uh, basically. So thank you very much. Vamos a ver, voy a dar mi, mi opinión. Lo primero que lo que yo he explicado, lo que yo he explicado no es un contexto actual. Yo he querido explicar que tendríamos que ir en ese camino porque la tecnología nos lo está permitiendo. Luego entonces yo con Clemente no tengo que tener ningún tipo de conflicto ni contigo César porque la realidad es la que es y la que es es a donde hemos llegado hoy con las instalaciones y la mentalidad que nos hemos traído. De todo ese sistema energético eléctrico que tenemos, todos hemos estado viviendo, avanzando y desarrollándonos. Lo que entonces es un sistema que podemos considerar lo que nos libertó la de no sé lo que sea, es un sistema nuestro. Y hasta aquí hemos llegado. Pero resulta que es que va evolucionando la tecnología y el sistema hay que irlo cambiando. Luego la primera cuestión es que no hay un enfrentamiento macro-micro. Mi opinión es que la tecnología nos está permitiendo a que sea viable y económicamente rentable un sistema micro que la tecnología nos permite que en un futuro nos tendremos que ir adaptando a esa mentalidad. Y no podemos seguir pensando en que solo hay una opción, que es estar en un sistema absolutamente centralizado porque hay otras opciones que poco a poco se irá demostrando que son más rentables. Eso es un, un enfoque para no tener que andar con que aquí hay un enfrentamiento en absoluto. Hay que aceptar lo que tenemos y además tenemos que felicitarnos por lo que tenemos. Ahora, la cuestión siguiente. ¿Hacía falta 4.000 megavatios? Aquí ha habido, una, desde mi punto de vista, una estrategia de total y absoluta imprevisión. Entonces, hemos estado pagando una eólica que poco a poco se ha ido demostrando y cada vez ha ido siendo más barata y la estrategia ha sido, desde ese punto de vista, buena. Lo malo de la eólica es que resulta que el sistema de garantía, de garantización y de seguridad de suministro se ha ido metiendo con otro elemento que es que no era el bueno desde mi punto de vista. La fotovoltaica, en la fotovoltaica resulta que es que es carísima, pero ha sido carísima no porque sea carísima, ha sido carísima porque ha habido también una imprevisión total y algo que valía a, 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 a 300 euros nos lo han cobrado a 7.000 euros. ¿Por qué? Pues porque como hubo un boom de una llamada 
internacional de un producto de golpe, pues resulta que el fabricante subió el precio y lo multiplicó por 10. Cuando ha bajado la demanda, resulta que ahora esas instalaciones de 5.000 megavatios podrían haber, co haber costado, no digo 10 veces menos, pero sí la cuarta parte. Y hoy estaríamos hablando de un escenario energético con una te un problema tarifario de, de, de tarifa muy diferente del que tenemos. Por un lado, la, la problemática del ciclo combinado, que es una ruina, porque no está trabajando, no tiene horas de funcionamiento, y por otro lado, una fotovoltaica, que resulta que ha sido carísima, pero porque se ha puesto a un precio que no era el suyo. Tenía que haberse puesto a un precio muy inferior. Luego, entonces, esas imprevisiones son las que tenemos que cuidar, que no volvamos a caer, para poder ir avanzando en ese otro escenario que hoy no tenemos, pero que tendremos que ir conquistando, que es el de ir adoptando sistemas descentralizados para ir haciendo que el peso de todas esas macroinstalaciones vaya disminuyendo. Eso es, eso es lo, que, lo único que yo quería eh, decir. Yo estoy, estoy de acuerdo con todas las matizaciones y todo lo que has dicho, pero yo creo que claramente el problema energético español no es tecnológico, no es tecnológico, es un problema de regulación, un problema regulatorio gravísimo, gravísimo en España. Y si hay una incertidumbre regulatoria, pues a ver qué va a hacer el inversor, el gran inversor. Pues desde luego, yo casi iba a decir que hoy día las, las empresas eléctricas españolas lo que más le gustaría es poder vender todo y largarse de aquí, porque esto es, cada uno que viene deja pequeño al anterior. Y ese es un problema gravísimo, gravísimo. Los problemas tecnológicos, pues por supuesto que no quepa ninguna duda que las primeras que van a estar en la medida que esos avances tecnológicos vayan cubriendo necesidades, las primeras que van a estar son las eléctricas, por supuesto, donde esté el negocio. ¿Cómo se arregla lo que planteas tú, César? Pues es el resultado de 50 años de desastre. No se va a hacer... A ver, ¿quién va a decir ahora? Bueno, se va a arreglar así. Por... Y de hecho, cada vez que ha salido uno en el ministerio diciendo esto se arregla así, ¡joder! Pues ya es como estamos. falta de planificación es una falta de planificación tremenda yo me ha tocado meterme en un tema de eólica ¿vale? y llevo tres años tres años yo no sé si habéis adelantado tanto los científicos pero hace tres años un megavatio en eólico en los parques que estábamos manejando nosotros manejábamos cifras de millón y medio de euros por megavatio ¿eh? y, de, y con tres años que se habrá investigado muy poquito ya en eólica, porque no se ha instalado nada, no está el mercado que tú decías, que es el que fuerza la máquina. ¿eh? En tres años cuesta 700, 750.000, no llega a 800. Alguien se ha estado haciendo aquí demasiado rico, ¿eh? Y alguien lo ha permitido. Y deberíamos de pedir explicaciones aquí a mucha gente, porque de esas políticas, ¿eh? o de esos polvos han venido estos lodos, y ahora mi sector se está arruinando. ¿Vale? Hay movilizaciones preparadas para el día 26 de febrero a nivel nacional. Y hay que oír a los agricultores exclamarse del precio que les cuesta mover un metro cúbico de agua. Pero sabéis también, sabéis también que el, el problema de la, la burbuja... ¿Tú quieres comentar algo? La burbuja energética no, es, no viene exclusivamente, ni mucho menos del pago de las subvenciones que necesitan las renovables caras. Hay muchísimas más cosas metidas ahí. Están las extrapeninsulares, se habla de 400 euros el megavatio hora de producción en el hierro. Eso, toda esa diferencia entre 50 y 60 euros en la península y 400 en el hierro, lo pagamos entre todos en el recibo. Está eh, los peajes de acceso a la red, está eh, la moratoria nuclear, hay un mogollón de cosas que por decisión política se han ido metiendo al recibo, al recibo, al recibo, al recibo, y eso es así. Y la célebre bombillita esta que ha sacado Iberdrola es cierta, 38% coste de producción y transporte y 62% otros. Venga, María Bien, eh, lo que sea y, y cerramos ya, si os parece. Yo acabo muy rápido. Primero, 
decir que estoy fascinado porque es una sesión preciosa y ahora es donde podríamos empezar tres o cuatro días a discurrir juntos. Yo daría las gracias a Humedas, a, a, a la Confederación, por haber hecho esa sesión, que es un reflejo sorprendente. Yo he sido consultor de Naciones Unidas en Mozambique y en África hace 20 o 30 años y cuando veo a todos los consultores de aquí me fascina porque este acto es donde podrían haber aprendido mucho se han ido todos no sé dónde es surrealismo aragonés Luis Buñuel haría una película porque esta sesión, aquí estáis gente que sabéis muchísimo gente, y nos hemos quedado todos los que somos españoles encantados porque ha salido hasta las traductoras, es surrealismo bueno, porque no hace falta ni traductora, nadie tenía eh, estaba oyendo de los que podrían haber venido a aprender, por tanto gracias por la sesión Gracias también a todos los que estáis, Tomás Sánchez, hemos trabajado juntos, eres un sabio. Yo creo que se tendría que atrever la confederación para montar unas grandes jornadas sobre este mismo tema, pero yo voy más lejos. Yo creo que entramos en un mundo eh, que lo vio la Tennessee Valley Authority, que todavía hoy produce electricidad y produce agua, eh, por una decisión histórica hace 50 años o más se separó agua y electricidad de las confederaciones pero yo creo que las confederaciones son el mejor sistema de, de administración de agua pública del mundo y que tenemos un gran sistema eléctrico también, yo creo que uno del primero, segundo, tercero mejor del mundo, con problemas gordos como sobre capacitación el doble de la necesaria con unos problemas de 28.000 millones que no es dinero, para las posibilidades que tiene España eso se puede resolver lo que pasa es que no hay que ir a un problema obsesionarnos con las tarifas, que las pagamos, yo soy elegante también, hay que resolverlo, sino que hay, un, hay que ir, cuando hay una sobrecapacitación del sector naval, del sector siderúrgico, se hace una reconversión, y estoy trabajando en una reconversión muy profunda, hay que cerrar 7 ocho mil megavatios. Yo planteo que por seguridad pública y por eh, obsolescencia tecnológica habrá que cerrar las nucleares, y yo sé que se pone frenético Iberdrola, que tiene la mitad de la nuclear de España, pero, pero es que hay que entrar en serio. Si hay sobrecapacidad hay que cerrar. No vamos a cerrar los ciclos combinados que ayudan a la transición a las renovables, porque son ágiles. Luego, ese gran debate yo lo ofrezco para cuando queráis. Estamos haciendo una película, os ruego que habléis, pero no hablemos de dinero. Vamos a hablar de cómo este gran sistema de producción de electricidad puede bajar los precios puede quitar sobrecapacidad. Eh, eh, alguien proponía el otro día en el país la nacionalización de las eléctricas. A estas alturas volver a eso. Yo creo que ya se hizo un sistema red eléctrica de España, es el mejor eh, transportador y regulador de electricidad del mundo. Tenemos tecnológicamente lo mejor del mundo. Las empresas españolas están produciendo por la ingeniería española eléctrica, es extraordinaria y os felicito y díselo a tus colegas del mundo entonces, ahora lo que hay es un problema de estar a la altura es decir, sabemos todo de todo, pero la electricidad es muy cara algo ha habido, esa burbuja habrá que meter mano a alguien o es imposible, o darla por perdida pero no, va, no, no la van a pagar solo los agricultores me explico, ni a DIF en el billete de Renfe pues es que es un problema muy, muy complejo que no es tecnológico sino es estratégico y Enhorabuena, yo creo que nos debíamos dar una enhorabuena, pero de verdad abrís el gran debate. Yo, yo le llamaría el debate la reconversión eléctrica. No es un problema de tarifa, lo siento, y además admiro a Iberdrola en muchas cosas. Yo quería hacer una pregunta importante, Iberdrola. Eh, yo estoy fascinado porque la, eh, he sido antinuclear, monté los primeros artículos, los primeros comités antinucleares hace 40 años, y la nuclear ha ido a menos, ha ido a menos porque los inversores no quieren meter en eso. El capitalismo es muy sencillo. Si nadie quiere meter el dinero en eso, se va a otros temas. Y lo han ido a otros temas más fáciles. Eh, los cazaprimas de la fotovoltaica, lo esto, lo otro. Entonces, las nucleares en estos momentos me sorprende que hayáis hecho algo tan extraordinario. Ayer os hice un homenaje aquí, no estabas, pero diciendo probablemente somos los primeros del mundo en bombeos reversibles, que es la forma de almacenar y gestionar el resto de las renovables. Fijaos si sí tiene importancia la hidroelectricidad. Entra una época en que yo propongo las confederaciones híbridas entre agua y electricidad. Ya estáis recuperando algunas concesiones. Dentro de 10 o 12 años 
las confederaciones van a tener una cantidad de centrales hidroeléctricas maravillosas y eso, como os venden agua también, pues van a vender agua y electricidad y va a bajar el precio, como en Alemania. ¿Entiendes si va lejos? ¿Lo ves o no? Sueñas, ¿eh? El error de haber separado las energías antes. ¿Y, y qué otra cosa ha hecho grande el sistema eléctrico español? Es que os ha permitido hacer, a, haceros la tercera empresa del mundo, la cuarta. Os ha visitado al resto del mundo. Ayer vi que estaba Galán, Sánchez Galán, diciendo que el primer inversor en Estados Unidos de España es Iberdrola. Estamos haciéndoles centrales termosolares, estamos haciéndoles... Es una maravilla. Gracias a España y a, las, a, la, a, la, a la electricidad habéis podido haceros internacionales. Ha llegado Endesa, que es la otra mitad, el 40% de las renovables, con una sorpresa total, porque en, al, en Italia suprimen las centrales nucleares por referéndum y aquí vienen a comprar, aquí a Checoslovaquia, a comprar nucleares. Que nos queda el peligro, los beneficios se los llevan. Pues si, si, yo los quiero llevar al, al Tribunal Europeo de Derechos Humanos. Si en Italia no quieren tener los seguros, los riesgos de las nucleares, porque se vienen a comprar nucleares aquí, los riesgos los tenemos aquí, como un día falle una en los pocos años que les quedan y no, no vaya bien. Por tanto, yo nos daría un gran aplauso mutuo. Hay que resolver el tema eléctrico en precios, pero no seamos uh, catastrofistas. Yo creo que, que es algo grandioso. Pues, pues entonces eh, se levanta la sesión, ¿no? Porque nos hemos quedado cuatro, pues oye. Pero bueno, hemos sido cuatro amigos. Venga, oye.